Natalia Fishman, and let me fix my collar here and uh, fix my hair. Uh, it's hard to do this on this thing. Ah, whatever. All right. We're getting started. Hey, welcome, everybody, to our uh, latest and greatest um, Facebook Live. Just one thing. You probably saw this on Facebook. We announced that our newest app, which is this new quiz on Pancras, is available today in the Apple Store. There's iPad versions, and there's... Um, iPhone versions and let us know what you think. We're going to try to make a number of these different quizzes. Uh, they're kind of a lot of fun. It's I think 10 minutes of your time. Quiz yourself on 50 interesting, in this case, pancreatic mass cases. And we're going to try to do a few of these. Uh, but uh, let us know how you like the interface. Uh, we gave options, for example, as you can take the quiz as a time thing every 10 seconds. It gives the answer. Or you can take your time and do the cases, just going next case, next case, next case. So it's kind of cool. And if you get interrupted and you have to stop, it remembers where you are. So it's, I think, very nicely done. The interface is really slick. And we want to use this as a prototype for doing other things I mentioned. But we really do need you to give us any comments. So let, let's talk today about uh, managing pancreatic cysts. And uh, we wrote a paper a number of years ago that showed that on CT, and this was on 16 slice CT, you would have anywhere between 3 and 5% of patients have pancreatic cysts. At that point, someone even a little bit after wrote an article in MR that 20% of patients had incidental pancreatic cysts, though MR tends to perhaps overestimate. But regardless, even 5% means in a busy practice, you're going to see 2 to 5 incidental pancreatic cystic lesions a day. It was amazing. We never had this problem before. I don't think it's a thing that developed in the... 2018 time frame, but as scanners get better and better, <clears throat> the ability to see more cysts becomes easier and easier. So perhaps we just weren't seeing those really tiny cysts. Now, thin section, lack of motion, good enhancement, you're going to see cysts all the time. And the question, of course, is what do you do with these cysts? Now, we can have a whole long discussion process about pancreatic cysts, the real question becomes, not that a cyst bothers you, but could this be a pre-malignant process? We talk about tannins, we talk about the fact that pancreatic cystic lesions, in a sense, can behave very much like colon polyps. Under a sonometer, there's no issue, but over a sonometer, they can grow, become malignant. Uh, we talk about with colon cancer, that from polyp to malignancy is at least 10 years, and perhaps it's the same problem with pancreatic cysts. Are they a pre-malignant process? Now, it's a real challenge because you know, what do you do? Do you follow these patients? Do you do EOS and fluid sampling? Do you go and remove these cases? Well, what is it that you do? Okay, that's really the question. So we can look at several factors. One, of course, is going to be the age of the patient. Um, you, if someone is older, really old, and they have other comorbidities, the fact that there's a potential possibility of a 10% chance of malignancy in 10 years is probably not going to matter to you because your patient hopes to live 10 years. But what if the patient's 40 or 50 or 60? What do you do then? If you say, okay, I see a cyst, let's take it out, that's a problem because, you know, you're, you're talking about the nucleation, which is typically not done. Talking about distal or partial uh, pancreatectomy. Also, what if you see multiple cysts in totally different parts of the pancreas? Are you recommending to me that you do a total pancreatectomy? Again, even in the best of hands, a Whipple's procedure still has complications intraoperatively and postoperatively. A patient with a total pancreatectomy has become a brittle diabetic. And patients, even with uh, Whipple's procedure at times or distal pancreatectomies, can also have issues and become diabetic. So if you were to be very extreme and say remove every cyst, though you're not going to do that, um, it's not easy to do. It's not, it's not clear that's going to help the patient or that the harm caused by doing the surgery doesn't outweigh the uh, gain. Then you say, of course, when we look at the cystic lesion of the pancreas, there are many cystic lesions. The lesion we typically talk about following are IPMNs interpapillary mucinous cystic neoplasms. But we are talking about also other cystic lesions, such as a pseudocyst from pancreatitis, okay? Or a serous cyst adenoma, which has a range of appearances from a vascular lesion to a lesion that looks like a honeycomb, multiple cystic lesions and septations. 
that's a possibility. We talk about a lesion more common in uh, middle-aged females in the body of the pancreas, MCN, mucinous cystic neoplasm. It can be that. Occasionally, cystic lesions can be adenocarcinomas. We talk about cystic neuroendocrine tumors, which can be cystic but have an enhancing rim. Okay? That's something we don't, uh, we would put in that differential. So there are many things that can be problematic. It's not going to be a simple thing. So the first thing we do is we look at the lesion. What's its size? Tanaka criteria talk about under or over three centimeters. We look for the presence of septations. We look for the presence of nodularity. In a cystic lesion, when you see thick or irregular septations, or if you see a nodule and you see an enhancing nodule, surely those are signs of high-grade dysplasia or malignancy. So we're going to look very, very carefully at the cystic lesions and say, what other features are there? Is this a cystic lesion that's well-defined? Water density, no enhancing margins, no nodularity, no septations. Under three centimeters, then we're typically going to follow them. If the lesion's over three cm, you begin to think a little bit more about removal, or people will consider it more concerning. And surely, if you see even under three cm, but surely over nodularity, thickening of the septations, wall enhancement, you have to be thinking about uh, the possibility of a neoplasm, or again, a high grade dysplasia. Now, in trying to come up with rules, that's really the problem. The question is, what do you do? And I'll just give you a scenario. Patient, you're scanning a patient for a different reason. One centimeter cystic lesion, body, head, or tail of pancreas. Two centimeter lesion. Three centimeter lesion. In each case, the lesion was well-defined, no water density, no septations, no nodularity. Here's a simple cystic lesion. Should I worry about that? Should I get a follow-up CT? Should I do an MR now? Should I do EUS? It's not an impractical question, and we're seeing that question on a daily basis. Now, again, if I see septations, but there's a lot of septations like a cluster, once in a while it can be an IPMN, but typically it's a serous cyst adenoma. If I see rim enhancement in a cystic lesion, I'm thinking about a cystic neuroendocrine tumor. If you see a cystic lesion with nodularity in the wall, then all bets are off. I'm thinking about a carcinoma, maybe a necrotic carcinoma or a carcinoma arising in the wall of a cystic lesion or the cystic lesion was a sequela of that patient's uh, solid mass. Now, every institution has its own way of doing things. And I will say the same thing's true at Hopkins. We have a cyst clinic. We get together, we discuss these patients. Under 3 cm, well-defined, no family history, uh, depending who sees the patient. You may do an EUS or MR, or you may simply follow the patient after the CT. Um, if a lesion is over 3 centimeters, that's kind of the magic number in the Tanaka criteria, then people are more worried. You know, do you do EUS and tissue sampling? Do you do an MR? I think it depends. I think Hopkins were probably a little bit uh, more aggressive than most places, so we probably do more tissue sampling. This work being done by Burr Fogelstein and his colleagues, looking at the sampling of fluid from a cyst, and the question becomes, do you need to, can you tell what cyst will become malignant over time, and which cyst will not become malignant, which cyst I need to worry about, and which ones I don't. So it's possible over the next couple of years that testing this fluid sampling that we see a cyst on CT, and then we'll go right to a sampling of the fluid, and then what, know whether or not the patient needs to be operated on, whether we'll follow the patient closely, or maybe not so closely. So there is stuff coming along on the horizon, I think that will change how we do things. So you really need to be aware that this is a moving process. Now in saying that, as I mentioned, every institution has their own policy, because you're dealing with your own surgeons, your own pancreas people, your own pathologist, but um, there is a white paper that was published a few months ago. Alec Megabo is the first author. Here's the front page of it. Uh, and probably many of you have seen it. The good thing about it, uh, and you may not disagree with all of it, but they had to come up with something, and they tried to come up with, I won't say middle ground, but tried to come up with a practical perspective for being able to look at these lesions. And again, you know, when you do the um, radiology white papers, it's a consensus. So it's a little bit tricky getting people to buy in. 
And also people often don't like to give their opinion, though they are making decisions and affecting the rest of us. But, okay, take that for what it's worth. And so there were, this article, Management of Incidental Pancreatic Cysts, White Paper of the ACR Incidental Findings Committee. It was published in JACR in May uh, 2017, Volume 14, page 911 to 923. You can also find it on the ACR website, both in the journal, but also um, in their uh, uh, white papers on clinical unincidental findings. And you also can simply do a PubMed search and reach it that way. So if you haven't read it, it's worthwhile reading. They spoke about dividing lesions up. So when you look at their article, and it's about 14 pages, you have to read it yourself, there's a series of charts. You see the chart? Okay. And so one of the things is they looked at things and said, we'll divide things by size. Under 1.5, 1.5 to 2.5, and um, perhaps over 2.5. They also said, uh, when you look at this, that uh, should you, is the patient symptomatic or is the patient asymptomatic? For the small lesions, they spoke about age being a factor. So under 65 versus over 65, re-image at one year for five years, re-image uh, twice yearly for five years, under versus uh, over. And again, it is true that the smaller the lesion, the less likely it has the malignant potential. Uh, and again, that's why the 3CM Tanaka criteria works fairly well. And again, so this is, you know, I'll just follow one of them. Under 1.5 CM, incidental pancreatic cyst. Reimage Q1 times five years. It's stable for five years. Stop if stable over five years is one of the questions. That's what people are recommending. Uh, we talk about the reason you evaluate cysts is because of malignant potential. If you believe that, then you can't really be stopping the cyst because it's this follow-up because maybe it's indolent for eight years, the ninth year or the tenth year is a problem with pancreatic cancer. So how we screen, and that's a subject of another talk, screening for pancreatic cancer, both from a cohort family perspective as well as from a uh, genetic perspective of patients who you know, who ha who've had family members who have pancreatic cancer. So <clears throat> in this set of charts, again, the size range, and then for example, 1.5 to 2.5 cm incidental pancreatic cyst, main pancreatic duct communication absent, it cannot be determined. Then they'll re-image Q six months times four, then Q one year times two, and then Q, uh, uh, two years times three. So you see they're stretching out, and one of the things this article made the point is, how long do you follow patients? I mean, that's something we always concerned about. If I say it takes 10 years for a tumor to develop, and you only scan five years, well, it's not a surprise to develop it later on. And here, you know, the question is, the flip side would be, is do you scan somebody forever? Because the lesion stays the same, how do I know it's not gonna be pre-malignant? How do I know it's not going to change? So that becomes a very, very interesting point. Um, lesions above 2.5 cm, um, again, depending low risk, re-image Q6 months times 4, then Q1 year times 2 versus uh, uh, just removing the lesion. So there's a lot of uh, interest in having management being more conservative, but the question is how do you have a strategy? And it's very important to have a strategy because you want to treat each patient the same. So if you look at this ACR syllabus, you'll get some of those. Uh, they talk about incidental pancreatic cyst in a patient 80 years or older. What should you do? Depends a little bit on the patient. Again, these guidelines are developing. The endoscopists are more aggressive. They like to sample all the tissues. Maybe it's a early malignancy. I don't think I've seen many early malignancies when I wasn't suspicious from the CT. But it's possible. So you need to have some relationship with your endoscopist or the endoscopy people to figure out how they want to manage patients besides do endoscopy on everybody. And of course, you know, when you look at the tissue samples, tissue samples aren't perfectly uh, positive or very specific at times because it can be kind of challenging. So um, it's very important. It's also important in your institution to have a team on pancreatic cysts. So we get together GI, surgery, ourselves, pathology, 
and we speak about the cases. When you need to have um, tissue sampling, who's going to do the biopsy? Is it the GI people or the radiology people? Well, whoever does the best or what the best way of approaching the lesion is, is the way you should be considering. Now, it's interesting, as I mentioned before, one of the controversies is how long do you follow? Again, a 10-year latent period, at least, so maybe you need to follow forever. This article tried to address that. For most patients, we advocate 9 to 10-year follow-up, terminating at age of 80. For those who are less than 65 at time of diagnosis, a follow-up ending at age 80 will extend the 10-year length. So, again, people want to scan through their 80s. So, but you can see the problem is if we pick up a patient at age 45, what are they going to get, 35 CTs or ultrasounds or EUSs? It's expensive, it's challenging, and has risk for the patient just because any study has risk. So I've gone through some of the things, and as this article says, the history of cysts remains uncertain. Our recommendations cannot be simple or entirely definitive, and Alex is usually very, very uh, specific, and the article is very good for addressing that. But I think the point is that you need to really be understanding what your management thing is. You want to make certain that all the radiologists at your institution make the same recommendations, not just five different people, five different answers. You want to work closely with endoscopy. You want to work closely with surgery. You want to work closely with the referral doc. And make certain that whatever you're doing is the best thing possible for that patient. So that's going to be 16 minutes and 47 seconds. If anyone has any questions, uh, well, we have a few smiley faces and a few uh, applauses, but little else. Um, so I'll, I'll just, maybe we'll just leave it there. People can write in questions. We will post this on the website when we finish the talk, um, and then we'll go from there. So again, I know many of you are right now reading, and you're going to have pancreatic cysts in the afternoon. What do you do with those cysts? Again, that's the challenge. Be descriptive. Be consistent and uh, figure out some strategy that works for you and your referring physicians. And with that, I'll say uh, have a great day, and we'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Okay. okay.